Hello, I'm with Caroline Dinage, MP for Gosport since 2010. It has been one year since you went to Parliament. How would you describe the job so far? It's been pretty hectic. It's been um, everything you'd imagine, really. It's a kind of a roller coaster. It's fascinating, it's um, interesting, it's challenging, it's varied. It's uh, sometimes quite emotional when you're doing casework with, um, with constituents, but uh, it's never the same day twice. It's a, it's a very, very fascinating career. Brilliant. And what advice would you give to a woman thinking about entering politics, maybe now or maybe even later on in life? Yeah, I would say definitely go for it. You know, there aren't enough women in politics, and which is bizarre, really, because in many ways it's a career that actually does suit women very well. It, it's very suited to our sort of feminine skill sets, if you like. You know, the casework, the dealing with constituents, the communication skills, the ability to talk to people that, that women tend to have as a sort of part of their skill set is all very valuable things for a Member of Parliament to be able to do. And so actually, I think we should definitely encourage women to get involved. Don't think it's all tub-thumping and rah-rah and shouting at each other in the, in the Chamber of the House of Commons, because that's a very small part of it, and you don't really have to get involved in all that. I mean, what could you be doing before you you know, stand for a seat, what can you do to sort of get involved? I think it's important to um, maybe get involved in some sort of campaigning activities. I think um, maybe get involved with some door knocking, some um, of the activities of your local association, and also maybe make contact with the, um, the party central office and attend a few events, a few training courses. Just build up a network of, of contacts, but also friends, because many of the people that are doing the same thing as you will be elected at the same time as you yeah. are. And it's nice to have a group of friends when you um, when you come up here that you already know people that you can hang out with and, and bounce ideas off of and just uh, share information. Brilliant. And uh, you actually ran in 2005, but you were unsuccessful. What made you, you know, do it all again? Well, I did take a break. I didn't, I didn't sign up for it immediately. They, they wanted to fast track me again, and I decided I, I needed to take a break from it um, because I'm a mum and I have a business, and I just um, wanted to take a step away. But I just felt that it was something that I could do, and I think it's one. As women, often we say, often we take rejection very personally, mm -hmm. and I think that's really important to bear in mind that when we're being rejected as a member of a political party, it's very, very rare that it's actually us as a person that's being rejected. It's the fact that the nation are rejecting that polit political party, and so I think we mustn't mustn't take it um, personally too much and and um, and push on because I would hate women to be put off by any kind of rejection of of that sense by thinking that it's, it's sort of directed at them as a person rather than mm -hmm. them as a representative of their, of their party. So um, I would, uh, yeah, so I, I stood again because I felt that I, I felt that this was something I wanted to do. I thought this was something that I could do and that I could contribute. I had something I could contribute and uh, so I decided to give it one more go. And in terms of campaigns like Women to Win, what sort of key aspects of that help before you run are the most important to a woman? So if you're thinking back to before you ever ran in 2005, what were you sort of needing and, and benefited from? Before you became well, women to win wasn't really very so much around in uh, in the run up to the 2005 election as it was after, um, but I did find it was great for really the moral support, the um, the information that they could provide, the help and guidance in going through the selection interviews. These things are all quite daunting, and just speaking to people who know what you, what you can expect and can help guide you through that process, uh, very very useful. And uh, what are your views on all female shortlists? Not, not, not a fan. Not a fan. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a, a feminist in, in many senses of the word, and, and I really do very passionately believe that women are good enough to contribute on their own merits and on um, on any level, and don't need men taken out of the equation in order to uh, be successful. And uh, finally, why do you think there should be more women in Parliament, if indeed you do? I do think there are, because it would obviously you know, women make up 50% of the population and therefore really should make up 50% of the uh, population of Parliament. And it is, when you think about it, we've had women in um, the you know, British Parliament now for nearly 100 years, and yet we have less female members of Parliament than they do even in the newly elected Kurdish government in Iraq, which is a little bit shameful, isn't it? Mm. So we do need to be representative of the population. But also women have got skills which really, really suit them for being members of Parliament. The, 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 um, 
women's skill sets. You know, that it's not all yelling and screaming in the chamber. It's not all pub thumping speeches. It's not all bluster and bravado. There's so many of the female skill sets that really, really do make very good members of parliament. The ability to communicate, the ability to listen, the ability to solve problems, um, the ability to knuckle down and do casework. Margaret Thatcher said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so much.